and that is that the centripetal acceleration, and we'll use a little sub subscript c, the centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of the velocity, this velocity will not change, the velocity around our circle, or around our curved path, does, the magnitude does not change, only the direction is changing. It's equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius of the path. And every path has a radius. Even this unusual curved path that I originally drew, there's still a radius for each of these curves. I can imagine a circle of some radius that matches up with this curve. And of course here, of course I have a radius for this circle, and that's exactly the radius that I'm talking about. So centripetal acceleration is the velocity squared divided by the radius, and the direction is inward. So this becomes our formula for centripetal acceleration. So let's look at an example problem. And we'll call this example three. So in an example three, we will calculate the centripetal force, centripetal acceleration, sorry, So in this case, we should identify the given information. The given information here is that the velocity is equal to 25 meters per second, and the radius of the curve is 50 meters. So the centripetal acceleration then is v squared over r, or 25 squared over 50, and this gives us a value of 12.5 meters per second squared. Now, the formula is v squared over r. Although this is a new kind of acceleration called centripetal acceleration, it should still point, prove the, produce I'm sorry, the same units that we looked at acceleration before. So that is to say, acceleration should be meters per second squared. So let's just double check that v squared over r does actually produce units of meters per second squared. So in this case, I would have v squared, that would be meters squared per second squared, meters per second, quantity squared, everybody gets squared, and then I would divide that by m, find that the m cancels that square, and that produces my meters per second squared. And this is acceleration. So this new formula that we've never seen before does produce the correct units for acceleration. But there's another way that we might look at this centripetal acceleration. So instead of going just around a curve, if instead we allow the motion to be really truly circular, as in the demonstration that we saw at the beginning of the video, then we can think about the period of motion. The period of motion, of course, is the time that it takes for that object to repeat the path. So going around a curve doesn't repeat, but if I spin a mass around on a string, then I do end up with something that repeats. So let's take a look at that situation.
for our purposes, we will always refer to the period as capital T. So in this situation, we're looking at something that looks more like this. So this is our radius of our motion. The vehicle is traveling around the circle. So for us to understand how we can change the formula, we need to come up with a formula for the velocity of an object traveling in circular motion. Now, of course, the formula for velocity, if we don't change the velocity, is simply d over t. In this case, d is the circumference. And that is 2 pi r. And the time for the object to go all the way around and return back, which is the same amount of time as the circumference took for this object to move around, that we would simply say t is the period, capital T. Let's put these guys in parentheses. <clears throat> So we can rewrite our expression for centripetal acceleration. So let's rewrite the original version of the equation. AC is equal to V squared over R. But for V squared, I'm going to plug in 2 pi, over R, 2 pi times R divided by T. 2 pi R over T, entire quantity. Squared. So again, my velocity is 2 pi r divided by the period t. And now all of that is divided by r. This r came from right here. So now let's go ahead and do the squaring. <coughs> In this case, on the top, we end up with 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. And all of that is divided by r. Now, to divide by a fraction, we need to invert and multiply. This means we would end up with 4 pi squared r squared over t squared times 1 over r. These r's cancel, and we end up with a final expression that is 4 pi r over t squared. And why did we do this? because we wanted to get rid of the velocity and get a new expression for the centripetal acceleration that was not based on the speed with which it travels, but instead the amount of time that it takes for it to go around, and we no longer have velocity in the equation. The centripetal acceleration is simply 4 pi, my mistake here, squared times r divided by the period squared. So this allows us to write a new version of the equation. AC is equal to... Okay, and of course we always have our original version of the equation, which is v squared over r. And both of these accelerations point in towards the center of the circle. So let's take a quick look at another example problem. Let's make this example 4. So we will take a mass. For right now, let's keep the, the problem more simplistic. Instead of swinging it around vertically, let's swing it around horizontally. Then we don't have to deal with gravity. And we can just simply look at the centripetal acceleration. So we'll swing a mass around horizontally on a 20.0 centimeter string. And we'll swing that thing, that mass around once every 
let's say it goes around every once every 1.17 seconds and what we would like to know is So once again, we'll write out what was given. What was given to us was that the radius was 20 centimeters and that the period was 1.17 seconds. Now, of course, this is not the proper units for the radius. It would be best if we put this into meters. And so we can rewrite the radius as 0 0.200 meters. So therefore the centripetal acceleration is going to be equal to 4 pi squared times 0 0.20 divided by 1.17 squared. And this will end up producing a centripetal acceleration of 1.15 meters per second squared. And again, to specify the direction, the direction is inward. Now, all of these centripetal accelerations obviously give rise then to forces. Now, we give a special name for that force, and in this case, the centripetal acceleration leads to something that we would call centripetal force, Fc. Of course, Fc would be equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration, or two possible ways of expressing the centripetal acceleration, the v squared over r, or the 4 pi squared r over t squared. So this produces two possible equations, m v squared over r, or m 4 pi squared r, all divided by t squared. another important equation which we will now use repeatedly throughout the rest of this section.